Hey YouTube, this is Detroit Borg, and today is January 6, 2010, and Apple has released the Mac App Store. This is part of OS 10.6.6, so you will need to update to the latest version of Snow Leopard. In order to do this, just go up to your Apple logo in the upper left corner and run the software update. All this will do is install an, an app in your dock. In fact, you can see it right here. So I've already done this, and I'm going to cancel this update, and we're going to launch the app. Now let's take a look around. So here you go, here is the App Store and it's very similar to what you're familiar with in iTunes. You do not use iTunes to use the App Store and you cannot browse the App Store either online or on an iOS device so you have to do it through the app on the Mac. So if you scan down you'll see new and noteworthy, what's hot, staff favorites, and that's all. And what you'll also see up here is top of the charts. So we'll see what's selling the best. So we have the top paid apps. Angry Birds, of course, is number one. And I will be downloading that to demo it. Top free apps is the Twitter app. Top grossing apps. So these are the apps that are making Apple the most money. So that includes Aperture. Now let's go to category. So if you want to search by category, so we have business, developer tools, education, games, finance, entertainment, etc., etc. So plenty of categories. Purchases. I haven't purchased anything yet, so uh, and I haven't signed in yet, so I'm going to take you through that. And, and we have updates. Now, if we wanted to buy one of these apps, let's go to Angry Birds. We can click on it. Here we have an explanation of what it is. So we have some screenshots down here. You can see down here the customary rating system. So we have 241 already positive reviews. And we can see the rent reviews. And on this side we have other information including what category it is, when it was released, version number, size, language, seller, etc. So if we want to buy this app, all we have to do is tap the buy icon for $4.99. And we'll need to log in with our Apple ID. So this is the same account I use for iTunes. I'm going to sign in. So now I can see that the app is installing. If we look down here, we can see an icon with the progress indicator on the bottom. All right, we have Angry Birds installed, so let's go ahead and launch it. And you can see it fills up the screen, and it's very similar to an iOS version of the app. Let's click play. You can see you now have a cursor, which you don't have on the touchscreen display. I already played one as a test, so let's play the second one. And basically, I'm just using the trackpad to launch the bird. So it's kind of like using the touchscreen. So in situations like this, you can understand why Apple released the Apple Magic trackpad for the desktop. But of course, this will work with a mouse. All right, to get out of this, I'm just going to command Q it to quit it. Okay, now let's go to purchases and we'll see. We should see Angry Birds in there, and there it is. I have Angry Birds and I have Twitter, which I downloaded on my iMac. Uh, and I don't have it installed here, but because I've already purchased it on another computer, it's purchased on my account, I can install it on this computer as well. So let me go ahead and install that. See, it's installing. It should go very quickly. It's a very lightweight app. Now, the app did install. What I'll have to do is go to applications to find it. And I can also launch it from the from Spotlight, but there it is, Twitter. So let's launch it. And I'm gonna tell it to stay in the dock. So options, keep and dock. And let's just log on. Oops, Detroit Borg. So there we go. Now if we go back to the App Store and take a look at some software already installed on this computer, we'll see that it already recognizes it. In this case, we're looking at iMovie 11. This is a MacBook Air which already has the iLife 11 suite installed. Uh, so it is able to recognize all those apps. So you will not accidentally download iPhoto, uh, GarageBand, or iMovie accidentally and pay for it again. But of course, if you had iLife 09, this is a good way to update. So what is the point of the App Store? If you've always been able to download software from a developer's website directly from the seller, well, this is certainly more convenient. It's one portal to access and search for apps for your Mac, and it's certainly a better way to discover apps that are available. Uh, so in fact, you'll find a lot more apps that you never knew existed just because you can easily browse it. You can search the top charts, what people are downloading, how people are rating these apps, that sort of thing. 
Also, Apple provides the infrastructure, so paying for these apps using your iTunes account is certainly more convenient than going to a developer's website and breaking out your, your card every time you had to make a purchase. So the payment system is very easy. Again, you just use your iTunes account, and of course, most people have credit cards associated with their iTunes account or value from a gift card. Uh, so that's a nice, convenient way of funneling those expenses. And of course, if you're an Apple user, this now allows you to break up suites. So instead of buying an entire suite, you can now buy individual apps. So if you just want pages from the iWorks app, you can go ahead and purchase it that way. Uh, instead of going to the store and basically buying the desk with all the apps on it for a higher price tag. And of course, this now allows iOS developers to bring all of those great iOS apps and games to the Mac platform. So now we have some interoperability uh, with that environment. So all the benefits of iOS now come to the Mac. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that all those iOS apps you've already purchased will come to the Mac. It just now allows developers to port those apps to the Mac platform. So once again guys, this is Detroit Borg with a quick look at the Mac App Store. Thanks for watching.